Hi, I'm Jamie from Bourgeois Baby and today I'm going to make one of my custom tutus. What makes our custom tutus different is that they are completely sewn by a machine and a serger. So I'm going to show you step by step today how I do that. So the supplies that I'll be using today to make a custom tutu are 100% polyester tulle. I use that in the six inch wide strips. It's important to use 100% polyester tulle for children's tutus because it's naturally flame resistant. The next piece of fabric that I use is a six inch strip of costume satin. I like to use a contrasting thread, and you'll understand why when we get to that part. For the elastic waistband, I use a one inch knit waistband. Also need hem tape or stitch witchery will work as well. Taylor's chalk, a good tool to have is a Taylor's awl. You may or may not need this, um, but it's nice to have handy. And then as far as for the actual machine to get the ruffles out of the tutu is a ruffling foot. This is going to save your life making the ruffles for the tutu. And the other items you'll need obviously is a cutting mat. Um, I also use my Omni Grip grid and an iron. So now that you've gathered your supplies, you're going to want to start cutting your tool strips. If you're using a six inch um, wide tool, then I cut the strips to the desired length. Today I'm making a newborn size tutu, so I'm cutting my strips in 10 inch lengths. Now if you have tool that is in a larger width, just continue to cut at the desired length. Don't worry about the width. One of the important things to take note of is obviously how many strips to cut. When you get to learn how many ruffles your sewing machine will do per inch, then you can figure out how many strips to cut. So I'm ready to start ruffling my tool. So I've got my machine set up and ready to go. Um, and I'll set the settings as we talk. But I've got my contrasting thread and because I'm using a light colored uh, tool, I'm using black for my top thread. However, my bobbin thread is white. And the reason for this is because as I feed the tool through the machine, I want to always be able to know what the top of my tool or the bottom of my tool is and to tell that is by the thread color. So for the settings on the ruffling of the tool, on my machine I use a woven light and I increase my stitch to three. The next part is making sure my ruffler foot is on a ruffle per stitch or the one. Now an important part here is understanding how many inches your ruffles are going to end up as. And this takes a little bit of math, and I think every machine will probably be a little bit different. But roughly for me, I did a test strip on my um, tool at these settings, and I know that 10 strips are going to give me 10 inches on the first pass. Do a second pass. Again, this is where the colored thread comes in handy, so I know what part is the top. This long strip of tool will end up turning on you as you're pushing it through the machine. And that is why it's good to know with your contrasting thread that you're putting through the right side. So the next part I experimented with was understanding what my tool ruffle is going to be down to in the second pass. And so ultimately I know that for every 10 strips after the second pass, I'm going to get two inches of material. So I calculate that out to get my final length. And now I'm going to start ruffling the second pass. So now that I have ruffled my tool through two passes through my ruffler foot on the sewing machine, I next start with the waistband. So I have a six inch piece of costume satin that is 60 inches wide. I'm making a newborn size tutu, which the waist should be approximately 14 inches. So I want, because this will be elasticized, some extra on the satin. 
I like to do 10 extra inches to the waistband, so I'm going to cut a 24 inch strip. It needs to be squared up, it's not completely straight, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's probably easiest to do it with a rotary blade, but I've had a very bad experience with one, so I cut with scissors. And so I just mark with chalk where I want it to be cut. So now that I've got that squared up, I'm going to um, iron in the crease. Okay, so the next part, I actually open up the piece of fabric, and this is where the um, hem tape or the stitch witchery comes in handy. So what I'm going to do, and this is going to help make a very clean closing seam on your waistband, is fold in the edges. And to do that without sewing is your hem tape. So I use a one inch fold. I'm just gonna iron that down just a tad. And in the center, place my hem tape to get it to stick. Okay, so now I'm ready to mark this for placement of the tool. And I am using a one inch elastic. So I actually give myself about two inches to work with. So that way when I weave the elastic through, there's plenty of space and the waistband has a nice flat sort of appearance. This is three inches. I'm going to mark down where the one mark, uh, one inch is. And I'm doing this on the right side of the fabric, the shiny side of the satin. Here's the tricky part. I need to put the tool where the raw edges of the ruffle are going in the same direction as the raw edge of the fabric. And my tutu I make a length that will fold over. And again, this is where your contrasting thread is your lifesaver, so you know that all of your tool is going to be facing the right direction when you sew it on. So now, I've used just a basic binder clip um, to clip the beginning of the tool to the fabric. And now I'm going to line up my thread on the tool to the chalk mark on the satin as where I will sew. I have my regular um, presser foot back on the machine. We're done with the ruffler. And this is more like a basting stitch. So you can actually just stitch this on um, at a large stitch length. I have mine on five. The other thing to keep in mind is as you're going along, make sure your tool isn't bunched up underneath, otherwise you will sew your tool that's supposed to be hanging down and fluffy to your basting stitch. Now that you've attached the waistband to the tool, it's going to look like a mess. So that's fine because this is where the serger comes in to help clean it up and give it a professional looking finish. So you can see here, um, I've got the two raw edges facing in the same direction, my black thread right on top, and that's gonna come in handy as far as the serger as well. I have just a little bit of space on each side to help with the um, closing of the waistband, and I'm ready to go to the serger. And we're gonna clean up and overlock these um, ends here in the waistband. And I have my serger tension set at five. So something right in the middle seems to work fine for me. So again, this is where your black thread is coming in handy. So I'm going to be cleaning off all of this extra here. So you will no longer see with after you do your overlocking stitch with your um, serger, these raw edges or black threads. So I just make sure that the black thread is always directly to the right of the um, knife of my machine. And again, this is where you always want to make sure that your 
waistband underneath is always facing to the left and the tool as well. So you don't cut that off. Okay, so now you can see that we've surged together the waistband to the tool on the tutu and it's nice and clean. And this keeps everything um, sewn together very well. And next, you can press very gently the waistband up and we'll insert the elastic. Okay, so I've weaved my elastic through the waistband and then I've taken the two ends after I've um, sewn the waistband together. I've taken the two ends and placed one into the other so that they're um, interlocked. And any messiness on that joining from the surging ends can be hidden on the inside. Then I take this to my sewing machine and to give it a nice secure closing, I just use a zigzag stitch to close that up. Here you have it, a final product, a custom tutu. This one is a newborn size with our nice elastic waistband. So thank you for watching. This is Jamie from Bourgeois Baby. Don't forget to visit us at bourgeoisbaby.com. See you next time.